for our prelude this morning, our opening song, it's Come, Come, Whoever You Are, number 188 in our Living Tradition hymnal. And uh, with your commuted, computer muted, you are invited to sing along with Jennifer. Come, come, whoever you are, wanderer, worshiper, lover of leaving, ours is no caravan of despair. Come, yet again, come, 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 whoever you are, wanderer, come, worshiper, come, lover you of leaving, ours is no caravan. As we begin our service today, we acknowledge the indigenous peoples of all the lands that we are on today in our various locations. While we meet in a virtual platform, we take a moment to acknowledge the importance of the lands which we each call home. We do this to reaffirm our commitment and responsibility in improving relationships between nations and to improve our own understanding of local indigenous peoples and cultures and their cultures. From coast to coast to coast, we acknowledge the ancestral and unceded territory of all the Inuit, Métis, and First Nations peoples that call this land home. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we are called to consider how we can each, in our own way, try to move forward in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So welcome. Good morning and welcome to Westwood. We're a Unitarian Universalist congregation here in Edmonton. My name is Carl Ulrich and my pronouns are he and him. I have on the honor of being your service leader this morning. Here at Westwood, we covenant to be gentle with each other, to value and practice inclusivity, to trust that decisions are made with care and consideration, and to take responsibility for tasks and problems as a community. These words are part of our covenant of right relations, which we members and friends developed, worked on, and adopted as a community. And this covenant describes in part how we relate and who we are. With our introductions this morning, um, our speaker is our very own Reverend Ann Barker, who is back with us again after a successful second knee replacement. And we are so grateful to have you back with us, Ann. We really, really missed you. Our musicians this morning are Jennifer McMillan and Rebecca Patterson. Technical assistance is by Bill Lee and Lucas Williamson. Now is the time for our shared chalice lighting. So if you have a candle or a chalice nearby, it's a great time to bring it forward. Because we are in the midst of great uncertainty with our healthcare system and it's taxed beyond our imagining, we're going to begin this morning with a reading from Shelter in This Place, the new meditation manual from Skinner House. And this is an excerpt from Dandelion Kindness by the Reverend Fiona Heath, who serves our Unitarian congregation in Mississauga, Ontario. In hard times, kindness between people is needed and necessary. 
as people of the chalice, kindness is the lived expression of the principles we hold dear. Being kind to ourselves affirms our own value even when others would deny it. Acts of kindness towards others show that they have value and worth outside of any movement or relationship. Kindness also roots us in the seventh principle, the understanding of our interdependence. We are deeply connected to all other life on earth. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown the intricate weaving of human bonds. We are all in this together. I think of this kindness, the kindness that requires us to dig deep and unearth our resiliency as dandelion kindness. If you have seen a patch of grass in spring, you know that dandelions are tenacious. Mow them down and they spring back up. Their roots go down, deep down. You can rip out the stems and tear off the leaves and with time, the dandelion will once more bloom a cheerful yellow. Dandelion kindness, kindness that wells up in the face of all challenges is what we need. We get torn down and we grow back up. We face our struggles and we help each other survive. Dandelion kindness does not mean we are going to be kind all the time in every moment. No perfect people here. It means we return again and again to kindness as our baseline. Shelter in this place, the Skinner House Meditation Manual for 2020 um, is edited by Meg Riley and is reflections on living through a pandemic. So it's a wide assortment of poetry and prose on a pandemic. We light our chalices this morning in the spirit of dandelion kindness. The lighting of candles of concern and celebration is a cherished tradition in our Unitarian Universalist congregations. It allows us to understand each other's worlds a little better, enabling us to share the joys and to offer comfort. As Jennifer provides us with music, you're invited to type in the chat section your joys and concerns that you would like to share.
last month, Sunday of each month, we recognize any birthdays that have happened in the past month. So you're invited to type in the name of those who have celebrated a birthday this past month. And then we will join Rebecca in singing happy birthday to everyone. With your computer computer muted, will you join me in the affirmation, which is on the screen? May the light of these candles inspire us to use our powers to heal and not to harm, to help and not to hinder, to serve the spirit of truth in loving affection and trusting hope. Our congregation is supported by the generous donations of members and friends. Interact donations are gratefully received at, uh, on, as on the screen, uh, info at West Unitarian, westwoodunitarian.ca, or you can go to the website at westwoodunitarian.ca for more ways to contribute. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live, together I receive, to you I give, together we share, and from this we live. morning everybody. I want to just pause and take a moment to recognize that tender things are going on all throughout our community, that people are experiencing losses and uncertainties and separation and just a new and transforming world. And so we wish to just hold one another in our hearts, hold one another in care, and remember that that is the most important function of our gathering is to be together, to hold one another in this frame of peace and love the best we can. In the first frame of a cartoon, one person asks the other, why so optimistic about the new year? What do you think it will bring? Everything seems so messed up. The second person answers, I think it will bring flowers. Yeah, how come? Asks the first person. And the second person who is on her hands and knees in the dirt answers, because I am planting flowers. This cartoon story was retold by Kate Wilkinson in Shelter in This Place. All of our readings this morning come from this book. Ministers have a thing that some of us call sermon seeds. Some traditions produce them as formal shared documents, starter ideas that are tied to a common lectionary. But Unitarian Universalists tend to be less structured and more independent. We might write down an idea or a sentence, sometimes just a single word, a book or a song title, saving it as a seed that might hopefully grow someday into a useful piece of work. I have them all over. Look, my wife is laughing. Mostly on my desk, but also in file folders, in my purse, scribbled on the back of napkins, on the table beside my comfortable chair, squeezed into the blank spaces that go around the outside edges of those annoying little cardboard thing or, um, yeah, cardboard things that are in your magazines. 
my knitting bag, the glove compartment, endless notebooks, everywhere, really. Everything that happens, every person we meet, everything we see can contain these seeds. They're plentiful like dandelion fluff and they can escape floating away on the slightest gust of wind just as easily. I'll find them weeks or months or even years later tucked into a book and I'm immediately teleported to the moment when I wrote it down. That interview I heard with some wise being that, or that essay that altered my direction in life. And sometimes when I find them, I have no clue what they mean and straight into the recycling, those ones go. Do you have that experience where something touches you and you'll sure you, you're sure you'll remember that moment forever? And sometimes you do because it shaped everything that came after. And sometimes, well, you just don't. That 2 a.m. brilliant dream message that's gone when you wake up again in the morning. Maybe you write notes on scraps of paper too. I wonder what you do with them. If they're saved up for when you have more time and you can read that article or write that blog post or look more deeply into an intriguing idea. So I write the snippets down, seeds to be nurtured on another day. And I hope it's enough when I find it later. Some of them will flower beautifully and some of them are lost, and some just lay dormant, waiting for their turn to be planted. Nine years ago, in 2012, Westwood introduced its first ever year of themed ministry. Kathy Lightfoot coordinated our children's program back then, and we planted that seed together. And our first ever Westwood theme was living our UU principles. Kathy is the one who designed our rainbow people and our rainbow posters that hang on the walls of our church sanctuary. You'll see an example in the slide this morning. That is the rainbow principle slide around our Westwood theme logo. And I've just grayed it because to represent all the possibilities it might, it might mean rather than the rainbow. And the little rainbow people on the outside represent all the future possibilities, the ideas, the ways we change and grow, the people who may not have found their way in yet, and how can we open up those walls and borders to help them come in. Kathy and I chose the principles as our first theme because they are foundational. They're important to all of us and in different ways, and we wanted everyone to have the opportunity for deeper reflection. Like this year, we spent a month on each of the seven principles. And we had this idea that we would have three or five or maybe even seven themes, annual themes, you use seem to like sevens, and that we would repeat in a particular pattern regularly. Three years would be ideal, but five or seven could work, where we would cycle back and take note of all the seasons since the last time we honored that theme. But you never know exactly what will grow when you water seeds. We ended up with an abundance of themes, different conversations that people wanted to have, topics that warranted deeper reflection. And here we are nine years later, having grown a beautiful bounty from the inspiration and enthusiasm of the congregation and leaders. Now, in this moment of global uncertainty, we're returning to our Unitarian Universalist principles. It's foundation work. These are our core commitments, ideas that we have rallied around and wrestled with for decades. We chose the principles this year for a whole host of reasons. For the new people among us or the newer people, anybody who's come in those last eight years, it's an opportunity to grow and deepen in your understanding of these central ideas. You've read them and heard them and they resonate with you, but have you had a chance to sit with each one and reflect on how they manifest in your life 
and how they guide and how they challenge you. It's an opportunity to make a personal connection with these value statements to go deeper and to hear from other people what the principles mean in their lives. That's something that's so important in our communities to know what our friends and neighbors are thinking. Some folks initially worried nine years ago that spending a whole year on the principles might be a little basic, kind of a beginner's program, that you know where you stand and you don't need an introduction. But I think we've established over these nine years that a theme doesn't inhibit our explorations. In fact, it takes them broader and adds a greater depth. Your worship team sits with the theme of each and every month and asks one another, what are the many ways this manifests or is needed in the world? How do our people live out this principle? How do people of other cultures interpret or understand it? We invite wonderful guest speakers as well as community members whose lives or work or dreams demonstrate a lived principle. And we look at the challenges of each one, the ways that such a big philosophical idea might be an issue or a barrier to well-being or even to participation. But here is my favorite reason for using this as our theme this year. And this is a new seed that we have never grown here. When we repeat a theme, it's an opportunity for us to take stock of our spiritual journey. The first time we study something, it's new. We're laying a foundation. When we return to it, we check in and see, how do I feel about this now? How has my perspective deepened or transformed or become more clear? What issues have come up since the last time we looked at this theme? How have we changed since we last formed our opinions? This is not unique to themed ministry. We do this in different ways all through our lives. Every time we look through family photos, when we attend a reunion or reach a milestone like graduation or retirement or those decade birthdays, whenever we revisit who we are, what is truly important to us and how we choose to live our lives. We become aware of how we have changed. What are the gains, the losses and the struggles we have been through and are maybe currently facing? But nothing requires us to do this kind of reflection. We might just carry on month to month, year to year without looking back. Our lives have patterns, rhythms, and can be marked by profound events in the world around us. Wars shape us. The Holocaust and the Great Depression shaped us. The civil rights movement, the HIV AIDS crisis, the fight for equal marriage rights changed us. Now the opioid crisis, the COVID pandemic and climate change are chasing us, are changing us, they're chasing us too. And these, and there are just so many more. Our personal experiences shape how we understand the world. Losses and suffering teach us, growth inspires us, struggles can wear us down or build us up or do both at the same time. And how we understand our own and our collective stories is important. Ritual is all about making meaning and about being present in the moment, reflecting on where we have come from and setting our intention together for the future. Who were we nine years ago when we explored the principles together? Who were you nine years ago? How have we changed collectively and individually in the meantime? When we revisit a theme, we ask ourselves more than what does this mean in my life? We get to compare, how did I feel about this nine years ago and what is different in my understanding now? My understanding 
My personal understanding of justice has changed profoundly through these years. My beliefs about inclusion have been transformed by teachings about equity. And my perspectives have been deeply challenged by the resurgence of extremism in so many facets of society and by the suffering and isolation caused by the pandemic. Think about where we were in relationship with indigenous people in this country nine years ago. We know that there's still a long way to go, but for example, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was only halfway through its mandate and the hearing had not been held yet in Edmonton. How many of us attended that local hearing and found ourselves with a new awareness, a visceral awareness far beyond what we had known before then? Now, this Thursday, we will honor the first formal National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. I hope that each of us is able to participate in some meaningful way, either in person or online at one of the many events available to us. Barack Obama was elected for a second term in 2012. And Stephen Harper would be prime minister of Canada for three more years. Do you remember how those two experiences felt? Same-sex marriage had been available in Canada for seven years, but wouldn't be available across the US for another three. Trayvon Martin was killed in 2012 and Black Lives Matter would be established the following year. Black Lives UU would follow two years later and now we're looking at the possibility of adding an eighth principle up for vote in November. Westwood will be holding conversations about this, and you heard Carl about the CUC forums then. Oh, look, Avery just typed in the chat. I graduated high school in 2012. I was 18. Here at Westwood, nine years ago, it was our fifth year celebrating winter solstice at City Hall, and it was Westwood's 25th winter solstice celebration. We called it our silver solstice. And we introduced the rainbow people, one per month. Does this feel like a lifetime ago and also just yesterday? Think about all the ground we have covered in that time, all the ways we may have changed individually and collectively, all the ways the world has changed or that we see it differently. When we revisit a theme, especially one so foundational, the bonus gift is that we get the opportunity to pause and learn from our experiences and from the world and to help shape how we will go forward in this moment. How are our principles relevant, effective or ineffective during a global pandemic? How do they speak to climate change, to racism? I hope that this year, more than any other, you will engage with the themes in multi-layered ways, that you'll spend time reflecting in both your personal and also in a community way. What do these principles mean in your life? How do they shape the life of Westwood? How do we live them out into the world? Together, we shape our collective future and we design the world that will be left for future generations. I invite you when the meditation song plays in just a minute to just reflect on the distance you have traveled in nine years since 2012. And to carry that thought through, through this year as we reflect and grow together. One more time, together we shape our collective future and we design the world that will be left for future generations. May it be bountiful. May we be worthy 
to the task. Blessed be and amen. Now, if you have a chalice or a candle nearby, it's time to bring it forward. Why so optimistic about this new year? What do you think it will bring? Everything seems so messed up. The second person answers, I think it will bring flowers. Yeah, how come, asks the first person. And the second person, who is on her hands and knees in the dirt, answers, because I am planting flowers. May we take the seeds of our collective wisdom and plant beautiful flowers together. Blessed be. Please join in singing with your microphone muted, The Blue Boat Home. It's uh, 1064 in our aqua hymnal and one of our favorite songs. I do. 
love that song. I know so many of you do too. Next week, we have Lori Calkins coming to speak about supporting the healing and resurgence of Indigenous nations through birth work. I expect it to be a wonderful service, and I hope you are here and uh, invite friends to come with you. <laughs>